All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us for this webinar. My name is Allison Davis, and I am the Campaigns Manager for Big Animal, EDB's cloud database offering. I don't want to take up too much of your time introducing myself because our time is limited. That said, today we'll be discussing the topic of breakups, and more specifically, breaking up with Oracle. Postgres has won the hearts and minds of DevOps and IT executives. You may think that breaking up with Oracle is hard to accomplish, but in this webinar, you'll learn that this breakup is a lot easier than you thought. So now before I introduce you to our speakers, please note the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom window. If you have any questions for us about the presentation during the presentation, please feel free to ask us using that button. We'll have some time at the end for a Q&A session. I would like to introduce today's speakers. Our first speaker is Rajav Rao, our global migration leader here at EDB. And our second speaker is Mark Linster, our chief technology officer here at EDB. I'm happy to have you both here. All right. Thanks, Allison. All right. So let's take this away. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're talking a little bit about Postgres. And this, uh, I promise you there's going to be just two minutes about EDB. Um, we're going to go through uh, some data about PLSQL and Oracle migrations that we want to share with you because we've been doing this for quite a few years. Talk about steps and tools in the migration. And then we're going to do not just a hands-on migration example. We're actually going to do a live migration. We're going to do a live migration from um, a local Oracle database uh, to the cloud. Okay, Talk about um, uh, you know, playing with fire in front of hundreds of people. So um, we'll see we'll see how we're going to do. And then we'll give you some advice on how you pick your first migration candidates. Um, and hopefully we'll have time for Q&A at the end. If not, ask your questions and Raghav and I will answer them afterwards and uh, Allison will send you the answers uh, via email. Okay, so let's get started. First here, Postgres is the clear winner in the database game. And this is all over the place, right? I mean, on the left side, we're looking at the, um, uh, the DB Engine's ranking for database management system of the year three times. We're looking at the Stack Overflow developer survey, where in 2022, for the first time, Postgres has won all categories of most loved, most used, most wanted. Before that, you know, Postgres was close leader in there, but number two often, et cetera. This time for the first, this year for the first time, or last year for the first time, Postgres won in all categories. And developers are really key to digital transformation because if developers don't love your stuff, they're not gonna move fast and you're not gonna get the right talent. We're seeing the same thing in Docker. Right, I mean, uh, Docker is one of the leading technologies that really are used in cutting edge services. We're seeing Postgres again being the number one real database. I mean, Nginx and Redis are really not, not databases. So Postgres is really by far the number one databases in, database in containers. The Cloud Native Computing Foundation's tech radar says the same thing. I mean, Redis and Elasticsearch, I think, are caching technologies, not databases. So again, in, in some of the most advanced Kubernetes-based applications, Postgres is, is number one. So as far as we're concerned, you know, Postgres has clearly won uh, the hearts and minds. And we're saying that Postgres is the most transformative open source technology since Linux. And let that sink in. Think about what happened to all the operating system vendors, VMS, Unix, Solaris, right? I mean, who's talking about them today? Well, you know, now 13, 15 years later, since uh, Linux really entered the stage, Linux is it. Same thing is happening with Postgres. Now, before we move on, um, I want to ask everyone, what database do you guys currently use? We're going to go ahead and send out a poll right now um, and feel free to go ahead and answer for us. Let me go ahead and launch that for you guys. And we're going to leave this up for just a couple of seconds, 30 seconds. So feel free to. And we're going to share these results with everybody afterwards, right? So you can see, uh, um, you know, all, all this, all this stuff. So you don't need to screenshot or something like that. Absolutely. And the answers are flowing in. I'm just going to give it a couple more seconds before I share the results with everyone. But there seems to be some clear winners. So I'm excited to show you guys the results. 
Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and end that poll now and share the results with you guys. So um, the winner is Oracle, second being Postgres, and third being a SQL Server. So. Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, it's not unexpected. Frankly, I'm, I am surprised now. This is obviously a Postgres audience, so we shouldn't be surprised about 60% using Postgres. But uh, this is not this is not unusual. But when I entered this business ten years ago, uh, Postgres would have been a tiny, tiny slice. So uh, so this is really good. But it also tells you why in this webinar we're going to focus a whole lot about uh, on moving away from Oracle. Not that people are not moving from SQL Server to Postgres, DB2, Informix, Sybase. Um, Mongo, MySQL, right? We're seeing migration streams from all over the place, but Oracle is really the number one source. Okay, let's move on. Okay. Um, this, the poll is still, okay. Poll's gone. Okay, so, and EDB is the number one contributor to Postgres. We're not the majority of the Postgres community. We're a large contributor, but we work there alongside with a vibrant community of uh, Microsoft, VMware, Fujitsu, NTT, um, and a lot of other Postgres companies, right? So, so, but we are, we're probably providing about, um, you know, a third of the resources working on Postgres today uh, come from, come from EDB. So I think, We've been doing this since 2005, so we have a certain idea what we're talking about and how this works. And one of our specialties has always been uh, helping people migrate from commercial databases, mostly Oracle, onto Postgres. So we've created a, a version of Postgres or a distribution of Postgres that natively understands PLSQL, OCI, uh, the Oracle drivers, etc. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about what it takes, what it takes to get off Oracle. Well, you may think that it's schema and data. That's like what matters. And yes, schema and data are very important. I'll share some stats with you in a couple of minutes that tell you, hey, code is really, really important. We're not gonna talk much about the API today uh, or the tools, but the API, meaning the JDBC driver, ODBC, .NET, OCI, et cetera, are also really, really important because they are the interface to your application. And don't forget that if your application thinks it's talking to a store procedure and you're replacing that store procedure with a function, well, your application is still gonna look for in-out parameters, cursors, and other things, right? So it's really important that that you think about the API too when you migrate, because that is what allows you to not touch or barely touch your application, okay? So schema, data, code, API, and tools, management tools are needed to actually get you there. Schema and data all by itself, not sufficient, okay? All right, so, and before we continue on with this, I did want to ask another question for everyone. And um, that question would be, what are your top drivers for moving away from Oracle? So I'm going to go ahead and launch that poll now. Um, and this can be one or multiple choice up to you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that real quick. I'll just give you guys a couple of moments here to answer. Um, and then I will share the results with you guys. Few more moments. Yeah, we should have made bets, you know. Yeah, right. Made, you know what? You know what happens. I think um, if you were playing a betting game, you would get this one correct for sure. <laughs> yes. Um. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll here and show you guys the results. So, um, the results should be up on your screen. So the clear winner for uh, the reason why a lot of you guys are looking to move away from Oracle is the cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think everybody knows that. At the end of this webinar, there's a link to a white paper that uh, um, has been written together with a partner who specialized in getting you off, helping you get off Oracle, especially resolving the contract issues. Um, and we know that cost is a huge, is a huge issue. And I think if you don't know it, like you can expect to reduce your cost about by about 80% when you go from Oracle to uh, something open source based like, like Postgres. 
What interesting also is the, uh, the infrastructure flexibility. For those of you who are not aware of it, Oracle does not allow you what's called subpartitioning, right? Or subpartition provisioning, which basically means that if you're on a virtual machine, unless it's Oracle's virtualization software, you always have to provision the whole machine. And that's a really big deal for people who want to move virtual machines around flexibly, have fast deployments, et cetera. Whereas with Postgres, this is one of the key arguments that you don't, you, you provision whatever parts of the server you want, and that's it. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing that poll. Awesome. Okay. All right, good. So what we're gonna show today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the big animal service, right? Which is a managed service running Postgres. It runs multiple Postgres distributions. One of them being the version of Postgres that is natively Oracle compatible. So understands PLSQL packages, all that kind of stuff. It's also running on multiple clouds today on AWS and Azure um, and provides lots of different high availability options, single instance, multiple instances with streaming replication, multiple instances with logical replication. Okay, so that's going to be the platform that we migrate to. One of the tools that we will use is called the EDB Migration Portal. What it does is it takes your Oracle schema and analyzes it. This analysis literally takes seconds. I mean, I've hardly ever seen a schema that took more than a minute. It also transforms that schema slightly wherever it's needed um, to, to bring it onto EDB Big Animal, and especially that Oracle compatible version of, of Postgres. And we'll show you a couple of examples how the migration portal actually changes things. Okay, but it also migrates your stored procedures. And we'll get to that in a second, why migration of stored procedures is so terribly important. And then, so this gets you the schema moved and then EDB replication server does the data replication from Oracle to Postgres. It can do that in a snapshot. So that's the very first time you move the data and then also change data capture. You may wonder why is change data capture need needed? Well, if you have a larger database, um, moving, the, moving a database from on-prem to the cloud can take, easily can take hours, if not longer. So doing change data capture is really important for you to reduce your, um, you reduce the outage, okay? So that you can basically run the system on-prem, you know, against Oracle as long as you want to, and you wait for the system in the cloud on Postgres to have caught up, and then you cut over so that your cutover window can literally be minutes or maybe 10, 15 minutes, but not hours or days, okay? So these are the three components that we'll talk about, the managed service, the migration portal, and the replication server. So let's talk a little bit about the Oracle compatibility. And I think we'll have another webinar soon where we'll talk about that in a lot more detail. Um, so, there is Oracle specific uh, syntax and, and compatible database uh, object types, like, you know, different types like Varchar2, for example. Um, PLSQL as a built in procedural language. There's dictionary views that your application may use to inspect the database. There's built in PLSQL packages. I think, uh, Raga, we have, what is it, 25, 26 built in packages today ranging all the way from DBMS utility to, uh, uh, to the, the queuing package. What is it called again? DBMS underscore SQL and lob, DBMS underscore lob. Yeah, and DBMS AQ also. So there's a whole lot of different packages that are built in and that make the migration of applications really, really easy. Okay, so you need to rewrite a lot less code. That's really what this is all about. Now, let's talk about the keyword code. Okay. told you before, it's not just about tables. Here is, you know, we've been, we've been automatically analyzing data and, and schemas, literally tens of thousands of schemas on our migration portal over the last four years, almost four years now. Okay. And this is what we learned is that of the overall count of things that we see, right, tables are only about a quarter. Yeah, indexes also make up a significant part, 
But then you get into much more tricky things that are harder to migrate. And that's where the native Oracle compatibility really kicks in. In things like views, sequences, triggers, procedures, packages, package bodies, and type definitions, right? They make up uh, about half of what we see uh, during those migrations. So don't be fooled to believe that migrating from Oracle to Postgres is just migrating the tables because that would be really easy, okay? So the packages, right? I mean, they're a big deal on Oracle and, and they're very useful and they're used a lot. So what we did here is to say, okay, which packages do we encounter? And um, uh, we've analyzed, I think, yeah, it says here 18 million DDL constructs since we started in January, 2019. Important to know is that in about 14% of the cases, we had a reference to Pragma Autonomous Transaction. For anybody who develops on Oracle, it's clear what auto Pragma Autonomous Transaction is. It allows you to break out of the transaction flow inside a store procedure and to do something that is outside of the transaction context, return to the transaction context. It's used a lot in Oracle. So 14% of all the schemas had at least one reference to Pragma Autonomous Transaction. There is no equivalent in Postgres. There's a workaround, but the performance of that workaround is absolutely miserable. Don't use it, you'll hate it, okay? 14% um, had at least one hint, okay? And 31% refer to at least one package that we have fully automate, automated in, uh, in Big Animal, okay? Here are the stats of which packages we used, how often they, uh, they, they, they popped up, okay? And these are all packages that are supported inside, uh, inside Big Animal. That's why moving from, Post from Oracle to Big Animal is, um, is, is relatively easy, okay? So I said relatively easy. This is what our professional services team tells us. Now, there is, hundreds, if not thousands of migrations that customers do without even talking to us. But from those where they, that they bring to us, this is what we know. About almost 20% of the migrations can be done in less than five person days. And that's migrating the schema with the store procedures and everything, right? Um, and the data. But what's really important is that a little over 60% can be done in, uh, in less than 20 person days. Now that really opens up the ability to get off Oracle and migrate onto something like EDB's Big Animal with Oracle compatibility. But that's only possible, these numbers are only possible, the speed is only possible because we have the native Oracle compatibility. It's only possible because you don't need to rewrite all the store procedures, right? You don't need to rewrite uh, all the type definitions, et cetera. These things exist largely. There are exceptions, and that's why sometimes there's a bit of work involved in making the migration, but it happens really, really fast. And the important thing is if you migrate onto a managed service like Big Animal, and we'll show you a bit of a preview of that in, in a couple of minutes, um, then you don't need to spend time on setting up the infrastructure. Our services team says today, on average, we calculate about 15, 10 to 15 person days to, uh, to, set up, um, to set up a Postgres infrastructure with a customer with high availability, monitoring, management, et cetera. But if we do a migration that goes on to EDB's big animal as a hosted service, that time goes down to one day just for basic setup and configuration. Okay, so this is a really important number, but don't be fooled, this only works if you go to uh, something that natively understands Oracle, okay? Now, before so, we move on to this, actually, I have one like one more question. Um, sorry for <laughs> interrupting, but um, I have another question for everyone, and that is, are you considering Oracle Cloud? I'm going to go ahead and launch that poll right now, and I will share the results with you guys live, but um, give you guys a couple moments to answer this. All right. This is one where we really can't guess the answer. We don't know. We're really curious yeah. to see what, uh, what the audience says, right? Yeah, this is this is a true gamble for sure. We'll give you guys a few more moments as the answers come trickling in. 
and it's fun because on this webinar we have literally hundreds of people on so uh you know this is not just a, a three people voicing an opinion this is actually statistically very very interesting Exactly. I'm very excited to uh, share the results with you guys. Um, all right. And just to give it a couple more moments and I'm going to go ahead and end the poll here and share the results with everyone. So we have a pretty even spread um, of answers. So some 25% of the viewers today are considering Oracle Cloud. 16% um, are saying, no, it's too expensive. The 26% say, no, I do not want vendor lock-in. And 31% said no, and it's for another reason. So that is our answers. It seems like, you know, even split across, except for the missing features portion, obviously. Yeah, the missing features. I mean, Oracle must have done a good job uh, from a capability point of view. So that's, that is interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on because I don't want to talk too long. I want to make sure that my friend Raga can, uh, um, can do the demo. Okay, so why would you choose Big Animal? Well, first, deep Postgres expertise. I talked about that before. We have numerous publications on our website where we show you know, how many people we really have. It's over 40 that are actively contributing to Postgres. So you find their names in the release notes, et cetera. The Oracle compatibility, I've talked about that a whole lot. And then multiple availability options that allow you to do a singleton streaming replication, logical replication, within a region, cross region. So there's a lot of options there. And then the fact that Big Animal runs on multiple clouds today on, uh, on AWS and Azure. Okay, so let's talk briefly about the scope of the demo. So we're gonna use Oracle SQL Developer to connect to the Oracle, to the Oracle database. We're gonna show stored procedures, right? And we're gonna run from there, what we call the migration portal DDL extraction, which takes the DDL definitions out of your database and then makes gets them ready for upload to the migration portal. We're going to use PG admin, right, to connect to Big Animal, which is basically which is running Postgres. And again, we're going to show the store procedures there, right? So we're going to show store procedures on both sides, exactly the same store procedure. Right? And as far as the migration example, we're gonna use something really simple for the sake of, of time here. Uh, we're gonna use the Oracle HR sample, right? And we're gonna show migration of uh, tables, data, and store procedures, okay? For those of you that are not familiar with the HR schema, it's a very simple schema, talks about job history, jobs, employees, et cetera, and it connects to the order schema also. Okay, today we're going to talk solely about the HR schema and Raghav is going to show some store procedures that modify the job history table on both sides on, uh, on, on Oracle and on, uh, uh, Big on the, right, thank you. Okay, so overall schema of the demo is this, as I said, Oracle SQL developer and PG admin is what we're going to use. The data, the store procedure sits in an Oracle database that is installed locally in uh, on Raga's laptop, actually. And then we're going to upload the DDLs from there to the migration portal, transform them, and apply them to Big Animal. And then we're going to move the data using EDD replication server, and we're going to use continuous synchronization or continuous replication to make that happen. All right, Raga, I'm turning it over to you. Sure. Thank you. Let me share my screen. And um, in the meantime, I see a lot of people raising their hands, asking about your questions. Know that your questions are being noted, and we will answer them at the end of this uh, webinar. So. Okay. Good. So now, uh, Raghav, you're you're using SQL Developer to show us the HR schema, right? Right. So this is my HR schema on my local machine. This is for the demo purpose. So uh, it comes with Oracle install. Uh, these are some of the set of the tables here. And uh, we have some of the stored procedures here. And uh, there's also some sample data that I've loaded into this HR schema. So I can show the replication as well. Great. Okay. And now we're going to go over to uh, Big Animal, the Big Animal console, and yeah. show you how to create a new Oracle compatible cluster, right? Right. 
So this is on the left side. Now this what is shown is uh, about my Oracle on the local machine. Now we'll see the big animal. So, so this big is animal a big animal is reachable for everybody to know under biganimal.com. Right, so you just type in biganimal.com, you land at Enterprise DB, and you're guided on from there to uh, to Big Animal. Raghav is logged in now. You can see he's already got a couple of clusters running, and he's going to show you how to create a new cluster there. Right, right. So this is a main dashboard, and this is one of the clusters I have already created, but I would like to show the new cluster. So uh, Big Animal provides. Uh, many uh, features and functionalities. So uh, when you're making a, creating a new cluster, you can choose, uh, these are the three options, like single cluster you want on a high availability or extreme high availability. So right now, if I want to take single, and then you need to pick your provider. So for example, if I'm taking AWS, then, then you move to the cluster settings. So you need to give some cluster name here. and the password. And uh, this cluster, uh, it's, it gives two uh, compatibilities, like you know, one, uh, your cluster can be created as an Oracle compatibility or native. So for this migration, we need Oracle compatibility because it supports uh, many of Oracle packages built in some of the functions, supported functions. So I'm taking Oracle compatibility. And uh, the good thing about this one is here, you have an option to choose your own versions. So always it's recommended to be on a higher version. Uh, so you will have a more Oracle compatibility features included in this one. So I'm taking the 15 and then it's the region you need to pick where you want this in instance to be. So for example, if I'm taking East, then you need to tell uh, the instance type. So we fall under which category? By default, it gives three categories to you. Um, is this instance going to be a general purpose or memory optimized or a compute? So I'm picking a general. And then uh, the instance series. So it's up to you the, from the AWS side, uh, you can pick, pick the instance series. So if I pick M5 and here is the instance model, um, you can choose the size according to your requirement. So right now I can, I'm, I'm taking a very small one uh, just for this demo purpose. And storage, again, uh, SSD, and it will pro give you a provisional one. I'm taking the SSD. And um, I'm, keep I'm keeping the same uh, volume properties, not changing anything. And, uh, and we want to make sure that whether this instance is accessible to the public or private. So this is an option here. And uh, once you hit a create cluster button, uh, this cluster is created in uh, a few minutes. And you can see on the right side, there is a full summary of uh, what you have selected uh, from top to the bottom. So this is the highest level summary of your node uh, that tells about whether it has a high availability, who is the provider and what is the size and how many IOPS it's going to support and what is the backup retention policy and all that. So this is how a cluster is created. And for the sake of the demo today, we're not gonna go through that. So we're just gonna use this uh, cluster that, uh, that Raga has created, right? Right, right. So this is, a, this is a cluster I have already created because I don't want to waste the time. So that's why I want to keep it, uh, this cluster here ready. So okay. now we're gonna go and, and, and uh, go to the migration portal. Yep. So, so we have the source and the target. Now target is our big animal, source is our Oracle local instance now. Uh, I'll show a um, migration portal. So I've logged in already. Uh, it's if you go to the enterprisedp.com and if you sign in, uh, then there is a dashboard. There, there's a multiple portals that is enabled and you can pick the migration portal. It comes to this uh, main page here. So here, right, uh, you want for this migration, you want the schema to be extracted. So for that, uh, migration portal provides a DDL extractor that you can download it. Uh, it's like an oracle.sql file where you connect to your SQL plus and run this DDL. So it will extract the schema uh, and that schema you can upload and uh, it will do the conversion in this migration portal. So this is a one method you can use or the other method is uh, it's a native Oracle style of EXPDP and IMPDP that you can use it uh, to extract and uh, generate a SQL file. So this is, a, this is a link where you can download the DDL extract.
factor. So I have downloaded this one. Yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, and, and one key thing here for everybody to know, the DDL extractor is provided in clear text. So anybody who's worried about, hey, what am I going to run there against my database? Yeah. You can read the whole thing. Everything's clear and documented. So again, if you have any concerns, those can be easily alleviated. So let's go to... Uh, uh, extract. I think we need to extract the yep. SQL. Okay. So let me connect to my instance here. So I'm going to, to HR schema. Uh, this is to my local. And um, here uh, I've downloaded uh, the DDL. So I'm trying to run that DDL. So when you when you run this DDL, right, it clearly tells you like you know what are the privileges required for you to extract the DDL, right? So if you can see here, the the user who is extracting should have a connect, select catalog, create table privileges. Okay, and these privileges is needed. So EDB DDL extractor uses uh, Oracle uh, DBA catalogs. And, and using that, it will extract the definitions. Okay, so I've given these privileges already. Uh, we want to extract HR schema and I need to give one of the locations. So I'll pick this location. And this is very important here. Uh, whenever you're doing a migration, right? Uh, you might be having one schema, assuming this uh, HR schema is your main uh, schema that is dependent for your application, right? In that case, what you have to do is you need to take this option as yes. You need to extract the dependency objects also because all your objects won't be there in HR schema. They will be in other schema also. So that's why you need to choose this as yes. So the DDL extractor will extract not only the HR and all the dependency objects. So while this is running, I have already extracted this one. Um, so the clear I the you can see here uh, it clearly tells like you know where it is writing, right? So I have I have already extracted. I will show one of the SQL uh, file uh, that I have extracted already. You can see uh, it clearly picks up uh, object type wise and it puts each and every definition clearly. Uh, and this is the this is a plain text file. This is what we're going to use to upload it to migration portal. Okay. Now we're going to switch back to the migration portal. We're not going to wait for this to finish. It should yep. take about 30 to 60 seconds, but uh, again, we don't want to waste your time here. Right. Okay. Now, assume that we have the SQL file ready. Now, what's, what's the next step is we need to see the compatibility, right? So whether this schema is fully compatible or not. So migration portal, you can make a project, like uh, you're migrating from Oracle to Big Animal, create a project, teleport your application interface and the version, Oracle version from where you have extracted. You can see there are four options here. Uh, mine is latest 19C and uh, a target database. As I mentioned in my uh, previous uh, uh, big animal thing, uh, you need to use a latest version. So EPAS 15 and uh, choose a file here that you have to upload. And uh, then uh, once you have uploaded it, you can use, it will give two options here. Oracle gives uh, allows duplicate names, so just to avoid that, uh, you can check mark this one and uh, maintaining the uh, Oracle default case the, the two options, and you can describe your project and then say create SS. Yeah. So this is uh, only one step we have to do, and this is already done. So I have created this, uh, uh, uploaded and did this uh, assessment completed. Just show us what's inside the HR schema there, right? Yeah, sure, sure. So, so once uh, once the assessment is complete, right, you need to understand this whole dashboard. So left side is your object browser. Um, here uh, you can see a failed count, uh, repaired count, and how many are with 
compatible. That means without any repair, how many are compatible and how, how many are passed completely automatically. That means uh, no changes done by the migration portal. It just uh, passed natively compatible with Oracle uh, Oracle mode, like, you know, in EDB Oracle mode. So here is the HR schema and you can see uh, tables, uh, that are that I've shown in SQL Developer, and you can see the procedures. Uh, you can see this procedure uh, that it says like it has. The, you can see the symbol. It says like this is a repair repaired one. Uh, let's wait. Uh, what it has repaired? Okay. You can see this window shows clearly the source. This is the source what we have extracted from the Oracle. You can see the target how it has modified, and you can also see uh, how it has fixed. Uh, if there are any incompatibilities it has identified. For example, it has seen uh, additionable. Uh, this is one of the Oracle functionality uh, that maintains the versions of the object types. So that has, that has been removed because that functionality is not here. So this is what it is repaired. And we have this schema fully compatible now. So. And then before you go on, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that it's always important to like the latest version of advanced server because we add Oracle compatibility all the time, basically. And just for everybody to know, like a big one that was just added by EDB developers was the merge construct. So the merge yeah. construct was never supported in, in Postgres. And now with uh, advanced server 15 and also PostgreSQL 15, the merge construct is, uh, is supported. So again, moving from, uh, from Oracle to um, uh, big animal, uh, Postgres is gonna be a lot, lot easier than before. If you yeah. take version 15. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so now we have a fully converted schema. Now what the next step we have to do is we need to migrate this schema to big animal. Okay. So this is the option that is provided by migration portal. You can do an offline migration and online migration. Uh, the offline migration is just you can download the converted schema and you can deploy in any, uh, uh, any environment. Now today for this demo, we are doing an online migration. Uh, where we want this schema to be created in big animal cluster. Okay, so uh, I want HR schema. Uh, you, you can see uh, you can pick and choose your objects also. For example, you, are, you want to migrate only the tables uh, for this for the testing. You can do that way also. But here there are multiple options for you to choose the object types, and uh, I'm selecting everything uh, to be deployed to big animal. And um, here is a target database, and uh, this will create a database for you uh, with this name. So it's up to you uh, how, you, how it was there on your production. If you want to make in the same name, you can give the, the target name here and the host name uh, and uh, the connection string. Um, let me go back to the screen. Just I would like to show one thing here. So here, so this is your connection string. And this all details you need to pass into this migration portal here with your username and everything. Okay. And then once you say like let me let me create it one for you. Okay. Sorry, I'm just done hitting the screen over here. Okay, this is successful and now this will go and create a database and load the schema and now it is completely done. We have a schema extracted from Oracle, uploaded into migration portal that made it compatible and now we have created the schema in the big animal cluster. Now we're going to switch over to um... Use PG admin to show that schema in uh, Big Animal, right? Yeah. So 
you can use big uh, pg admin uh, to view the uh, schema that uh, is being uploaded into big animal cluster so this is one of the i connected to big animal cluster and this is a pg admin uh, i have connected to the big animal cluster and um, this is one of the database that i already have that one and here is here is a schema that it has uploaded and created so here you can see uh, the hr schema uh, and the hr schema tables here a set of tables and um, the same procedures what we have seen there uh, they are here uh, and all the data is uh, it's 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 not yet there. We are we are we going to do the replication server. So this this is a whole scheme of structure uh, that we have completed in this step, in this step, uh, the migration portal step when we choose to migrate to. Okay. So now we're going to go to to the replication server, right? So migration portal was for, to migrate the the schema and the stored procedures. Replication server is the tool that we use to migrate the data and keep the data in sync between the Oracle database and the Postgres database. Right. So this is, you can see my screen? Mark? Yep, yes. Okay. So this is a replication uh, server console uh, where uh, the source is called as a publication server and the target is, is called as a subscription server. So in the source, I've added the Oracle, which is my local, and I've included a HR schema, and I created a publication for all the set of the tables that has to be replicated, okay? And this data has to be replicated to the big animal. So just now what I have connected, this is the big animal and the big animal database, and uh, these are the set of the tables that are continuously replicating to uh, big animal. Mm -hmm. All right, so now, now I think we're going to go back to, to Oracle, right, and um, change some data and show you that, hey, this continuous replication is actually happening. Right, right. Okay, so, so I've shown this table, right, this uh, whole HR schema. Uh, let's take this one table. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the data what we have uh, in HR uh, schema. So let me do uh, one insert. And uh, by the way, what I'll do is I'm not going to do it, just insert. What I'll do is uh, I'll call one of the procedure. Uh, let me pick up one of the procedure, yeah. Yeah, this is a procedure. Uh, this has an insert uh, command uh, by default. Uh, I'll use this procedure uh, to insert the data. So we'll call the same procedure on the other side, okay? So let me get this for call procedure. I think I have this one. Okay, I'm calling the HR procedure, uh, the add job history procedure. I'm trying to insert one data. Okay, and uh, this is uh, this is the details it asks, like uh, employee ID, start date, end date. Okay, and the job ID and the department. Okay. Let me insert this and I'll do a commit as well. Okay, the data is committed and uh, you can see the new record, uh, what I've inserted is 11. It's in this uh, table, job history table. And uh, since this is replicating to uh, the big animal cluster, let me go back to the big animal side. Uh, I think I should go to the PG admin. I'll show that one. Okay, let me replicate this. Uh, you can see uh, data already replicated here. Okay. Yeah. So, so now, so you can see now that that we've made sure that the Oracle database and the Postgres database are in sync. So we migrated the schema, we migrated the data, we keep the data in sync. There's one last proof point that we'd like you to show. I'd like to show you that is that the store procedure that we just ran on Oracle also runs on uh, uh, in Big Animal. So I think uh, Raga, we're gonna go delete that data element again, right on the yeah. post on the Oracle side. Yeah. And then we're going to run that same store procedure on the uh, uh, on the Postgres yeah. side. Yep. Yeah. 
let's uh, run the different statement. That's the same insert statement we're going to delete. So it's a one not one uh, with the same ID. Okay, that true is not here. And uh, this, if it is, if it's in complete sync, we should see the true, the one row, whatever is here, that should be on. Yep. All right. And now the last part of the demo is that we're going to execute that same store procedure, exactly yeah. the same store procedure that we just had in Oracle. We're going to execute it on the on the big animal side. Yeah. All right. Okay. Here you have on the big right. animal side. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's the end of our demo. Um, so uh, Raghav, if you let me, uh, okay, I'll continue. And I will uh, go back to our presentation here. Okay, so, so just as a quick repetition, we showed everything, how we moved first the schema using the migration portal from Oracle to Big Animal. And then we moved the data using replication server uh, with, with a snapshot initially and then continuous synchronization. There was one last thing that we wanted to touch on, which is what makes a good migration candidate. Hopefully we've convinced you, hey, you know, guys, this is feasible. We shared stats with you. There's a lot more information that we have if you want it. But where do you start? I'll tell you one thing, there's a temptation to start with the hardest system, the system that everybody complains about, the system that Joey built 15 years ago, gave it to Sally, who gave it to a contractor who quit, and now Jimmy has to maintain it, okay? And everybody hates it, nobody knows what it does, everybody would love to get rid of it. Do not start with that system. You're not going to be successful. Please start slow, start careful, and here are the guidelines. If you have a system that was developed, let's say with an ORM using Hibernate or Spring, something that was written in Java, for example, right? And the packages, if there are packages, are written in PLSQL. That's, that smells like an easy one, right? Run it through the migration portal. I think you'll quickly find out that that's a really good target. We'd like you to be able to modify the source code or at least test the source code, have access to the developers because every once in a while, there may still be something that needs to be touched in the application or the application need team needs to be available to help you verify uh, uh, functional and non-functional requirements, okay? The, if you, I mean, there are good replacements for Rack on the Postgres side, Postgres distributed, for example, but again, it's not a good ideal uh, 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 first target, okay? Other one things that are more difficult is, yes, we support the OCI interface, but not all of it. And OCI is really complex. Migration of spatial and XML-based data is also much more involved because, you know, uh, PostGIS is really, really good. I think it's better than spatial, but it is different than spatial. So there's more work involved. Um, and then if Oracle has proprietary extensions of .NET and ODPC, yes, we support many of them, but not all of them. Typically a lot more difficult, but feasible are things that, for example, use the old ProC interface um, that use transaction management control inside the PLSQL or that have store procedures written in Java. You may think that's easy. Postgres understands Java. Yeah, but unfortunately, many of these store procedures often use packages that are Oracle proprietary. So it may look easy, but our experience says that's not a good starting point. Okay. All right, so, hey, we're at the end of our presentation. Um, I know there's lots of questions. Uh, Allison will walk us through it. There's a couple of resources here. There'll be clickable links in, uh, in the presentation when you get it. Um, and, uh, you know, the last one in here is, is a, is a paper about Oracle's business practices and how to get out of your license uh, the constraints, right? There's guides here that Raga has written about uh, uh, the Oracle to Postgres migration. There's documentation about the migration portal. And last but certainly not least, 
uh, about Big Animal, right? Where there's also a free trial where all of the stuff that Raghav just showed you is available. So no dollars, try it out, right? Migration portal is free. Uh, the trial on Big Animal is free. So if you don't believe what we just told you, you know, try it yourself. All right. Now, Allison, we have eight minutes for questions, right? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So um, this another session is going to be just a Q&A session. Um, but for those who need to leave, note that there will be a little bit of a survey after this Zoom uh, meeting closes. So if you guys have a moment to answer those questions, that'd be really appreciated. Um, but other than that, we have over 40 questions. So we're not going to hit every single one. But what we're going to do is get more of the general ones. But everyone who's asked a question, um, your question will be answered within the next 48 hours. You'll be receiving an email from myself to answer those questions because a lot of these are a little bit more technical and I want those to be answered thoroughly. So with that being said, let's knock out some of these more general questions. So is there a big animal cloud version for GCP? GCP seems to be a popular uh, topic in these questions. Yeah, yeah Raga, when, when are we gonna get GCP? Uh, as per the latest uh, with the next quarter, Mark. Okay, good, good. So in that case, in that point in time, then you can run the same Postgres, it's really important, the same Postgres with the same support number, the same SLA, the same everything on AWS, on Azure, yep. and on GCP, and on-prem, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that's, I think, really important for lots of customers. So you can do, you can start your project on-prem while your compliance team is going through figuring out which cloud or when you're going to be ready for cloud, et cetera. All right. Thank you so much. So um, another question, how does Big Animal perform relative to bare Postgres? Oh, um, I think we're about to publish a test that shows uh, um, comparison to RDS, and that's exactly the same thing. There's really no noticeable difference uh, comparing uh, uh, Big Animal to, um, uh, to, to RDS. And we had, don't have a published test today to show how it compares to, let's say, I assume you mean Postgres on infrastructure as a service. So let's say a big animal on AWS and uh, Postgres running straight on infrastructure as a service or EC2. There's no reason to believe that it's any different, um, but uh, we'll have a test for that coming forth. Coming forth. Awesome. Um, so another question is, what kind of compliances do EDB provide? Can I host HIPAA data in your clusters? Oh, that's a question for the marketing person. So I can tell you right now that we don't have HIPAA covered right at this moment, but we are working to get towards that. But we have three other uh, compliances that I can provide to you after this for sure. So I can uh, send those to you individually. Um, another one is, um, is EDB Big Animal Cloud compatible with AWS? How does someone use the migration features of Big Animal to, AW, um, to AWS RDS? Ooh, well, the problem is um, RDS Postgres does not understand, is, does not have Oracle compatibility capabilities, right? So uh, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a version of Postgres, um, that, but it, it, doesn't, it does not understand PLSQL. It doesn't understand the drivers, uh, cursors, anything of that kind. So all the stats that are shared with you before are not valid there. It's a lot more work because you, you have to rewrite the store procedures. Amazon's uh, schema conversion tool, SCT, um, can help you there, but it's, it's a code rewriting approach. And let's say the results for store procedures are not overwhelming. Yeah, it, it's not going to uh, do the conversion of the packages and uh, building procedures or any Windows functions that Oracle supports. Yeah, yeah. basically what it does with packages, I mean, for those of you that do not know, packages are namespaces. Um, so if you have, uh, I don't know, DVMS utility dot some function name, it's not just a fancy function name, it also means that the variables and scope definitions are maintained within that package, right? Whereas what SCT does, it just, turns that into a longer string, right? which is a good starting point, but it doesn't resolve the variable scope problem. Um, so yeah, the, the results are not that great. Yes. 
So um, I'm going to kind of lump two questions together because I feel like they go hand in hand. So two questions is, um, hello, is all this stuff runnable on-prem? And the second question is, big animal versus EDB. Are we talking the same things? Bhagav, you want to answer that? Yeah, big animal versus EDB, yes. Uh, you have, you're, you're talking the same thing, like uh, since it's an Oracle migration. So the big animal is created uh, with Oracle compatibility. So it's the same. It's the same Postgres, right? I mean, we're running EDB Postgres Advanced Server inside Big Animal or on prem. So it's the same. It's the same Postgres, same versioning, same cap uh, capability. So you can develop for one and deploy on the other, and then it will just work. Right. All right. Um, what are some major compatibility concerns going from Oracle to Postgres? What um what are things that we need to be concerned about? Is there any major compatibility issues going from Oracle to Postgres? Uh, should I go on? Yeah, please go. Yeah, so mostly uh, built-in packages, uh, I would say, and um, old uh, legacy code like uh, using HTTP or HR and these packages and uh, uh, the legacy. When I say legacy. So in the old days, there was to use uh, external language inside Oracle, like C or PL Java or something. So those kind of things are hard to hard to make it compatible with uh, Postgres. So that has to be a little rewritten either on the application side or on the database side. So it's not fully incompatible. It's a method of how do you uh, change the old legacy style to the latest style, like moving most of the code to the application side and keeping very limited and functional on the database side. Yeah. And then again, it's like um, EDB adds Oracle compatibility capabilities to advanced server and with that to big animal every year. So mm -hmm. by now we are at about 92% compatibility. So 92% of all the constructs that people upload to the migration portal are automatically compatible with, uh, with EDB Postgres Advanced Server, which is the Postgres, one of the Postgres versions running inside Big Animal. Okay, so that's really what makes it much, much easier. And when I talked before about the tables, keep in mind that the tables are about 28% of all the objects that you encounter during the migration, that sounds easy. All the other stuff is where the problems are. Yep. Awesome. So um, we're getting to the bottom of the hour. So one thing I did want to mention, a lot of people are asking for uh, comparisons between our product lines and stuff like um, AWS RDS. With that being said, for those who asked that question, we do have a webinar that uh, compares the price performance with our main competitors. I can go ahead and send that to you guys individually. And other than that, another major question I've been getting across the board is, will we have access to this demo and these slides? So yes, you will. At the end of this presentation, you'll be receiving an email that will have both the recording of this webinar and the slides. And if you have any additional questions, I will make sure that I reach out to you personally like personally with the answers and um you can always reach back out to me and that's allison.davis at enterprisedb.com and i will make sure you get your questions answered but with that being said we are running out of time so i wanted to thank everyone for attending today and i wanted to thank our two speakers for such an awesome presentation and again if you have any questions that were asked and not answered we will get back to you within 48 hours but also if you have any more questions that you know you think of later, please feel free to contact us. A lot of these resources are going to be directly on this uh, slide that you'll receive. So, um, anything else from you guys? No, thanks. Okay. All thanks right. For the questions. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Um, I know it's later for a lot of you guys, but um, just letting you guys know, um, all your questions will be answered. Thanks for spending some time with us today, and I uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys. So, thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. All right.